uh, comics are stupid. No Harry Potter movie is good. Give me the Snyder God. Oh, sorry. Just walk in front of you here. I'm gonna put my pop with him. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna put this here. <laughs> Universal needs to sue Sony. Hey, I'm an idiot. I was fired from Fox. Let me go. <laughs> I'd like actually to see Venom just crush Spider Man. Hello, everyone. So I'm back today, and I'm doing something a little bit different because, unlike normal, where I do a review, I'm gonna hold off on that. And instead, I'm going to kind of go over critic reviews of Wonder Woman. 1984 and I'm going to kind of not only react to kind of what the critics are saying uh, but also kind of give my thoughts in regards to this movie as well right so kind of just mix things up and make things a little bit different okay so uh, let's start with this first review right here the the I mean sorry the negative one so overall I felt disconnected from the movie except for moments that focused on human scale situations. It struggles to be uh, relevant and serious but in a superficial cartoony way. It drones on for two hours and two and a half hours but hasn't got a lot to say. Now to be perfectly honest with you I, I do disagree with this review. Now the reason I disagree with this in, the, in a sense at least is because, like, look, does it does deal with, of course, human scale situations, um, but the other part, like, the other, but the other part of that, right, is like, it's also, like, yes, it does try to be relevant and serious and whatnot, but at the same time as it's trying to be relevant and serious, it also is trying to not be relevant and serious, if you know what I mean, like, like. Essentially, right, because it's kind of like Spider Man 2 in a sense, right? Like, if you look at Spider Man 2 and you compare it to this one with Doc Ock and stuff, it's very similar. It has those moments of revelation and social kind of messaging because it does have a big social messaging with this idea of, you know, you shouldn't be able to, like, you know, you you keep wishing for things, but everything you get, you know, there's a giveaway for that, right? There, there's something you have to lose, right? Nothing's for free, you know? And there's also this idea of greed and how greedy people are in society and how they can't be okay with what they have. And I think, so I think there are messages, but I think it's also obviously a, a cartoony movie with because it's a superhero movie still, so they have to balance these superhero elements with the more realistic and social messages elements. But I, I don't know, I don't, I don't understand that fully. Uh, anyways, let's go into the next one. So this this is the one right there, um, that uh, next one, one which is in the ca end. This movie never makes the case for why Wonder Woman is back in action beyond the obvious commercial imperatives. I mean, but like she comes back because she doesn't really go back in action, right? Like the whole kind of purpose of the movie is her kind of you know doing her thing and still saving people's lives because that's what she does but she's never really back she's just saving the world right like it's not like she ever went anywhere she was always saving people's lives in the background it's just now she has to deal with a bigger threat i don't know i feel like that's kind of naive in a sense scroll right now okay I don't know why it's not letting me scroll uh oh okay okay uh, you should see Wonder Woman 1984 after rewatch its predecessor and bask in what could have been. Oh, should you see? Sorry. Um. Hmm. Okay. What do I think about this one? I mean, it's very vague. I feel like this was actually better than the first movie, in my own opinion. But I mean, I, I don't know. 
So let's go over to the next one. Wonder Woman 1984 has huge boots to fill. Unfortunately, the sequel gets out of its maker's hands, and no matter what Gal Gadot does, she cannot. She can do a lot. She can't save her next adventure from being a misfire. See, that's the problem with these movies. Bugs me, and I know they're probably a full review. But still, I mean, I mean, like, it feels so vague, right? It's like big boots to fill. Gets out of maker's hands, right? Like, like I'm sorry, what do you mean by that? That's why I don't like reviews like this. Uh, the main problems from for this film start with the script and its lack of attention to detail, right? But like, this is the thing, right? Like, okay, look, is there one very obvious point of lack of detail which bugged me a lot? It was yes. And that point, actually, I'll tell you what it was. And that point of detail that bugged me was actually um, in the jet scene, right? Was... So when they were stealing the jet, her and Steve Trevor. See, my issue is when the fact that they got in a jet in a museum that had a full tank of gas, which kind of was stupid because, of course, uh, you know, if you have something in a museum, I assume at least, I don't know for sure, but I don't assume you don't have a full tank of gas. I'm gonna try to find views that aren't negative. Because I've read a lot of negative ones and I'm gonna read some positive ones. Oh, yeah, I got a 67 too, which I think is low, but maybe it's just me. Um, we're gonna go look at some positive views now, though. Okay. Uh, Jenkins and Gadot have Jenkins gone and, have and done it. They've gotten me invested in the emotional well-being of a franchise superhero. There we go. See, th these are the kind of good reviews. Now maybe it's just because I'm biased and I enjoyed the movie. I don't know. Uh, like so many movies and TV shows before, Wonder Woman has discovered the secret recipe for fun. Just set it in the 80s. This is not an incorrect assumption because it is. You can kind of go crazy if you're in the 80s. Wonder Woman 1984 doubles down on the film's first drive to find an optimism in desperate situations while amping up the colors and lighter sensibilities. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Look, kids, it's not great. Entertaining, sure. Funny in parts, of course. Great if disconnected fight scenes, but it's a lot of something and too much of everything else. I mean... It's a superhero movie, and it's also a social commentary on society. Can it not be both? Is that not allowed? Like, that's the thing, right? I feel like a lot of the issues with the fact that there are, like, you know, although I have to admit, the dumb coincidence part, sorry, I'm just reading in the next review, uh, right there, and the one below it is kind of, yeah, I mean, that plain thing, right? But, like, yeah, I, I feel like it knows what it wants to be, and it does that. And I feel like people are kind of angry because, you know, they're used to Marvel movies, essentially, right? Or that kind of idea of, like, where they, they do do a good job of kind of making it the stupid fun movie. Or Black Panther, where it's not stupid fun, and it's much more serious, kind of, right? Because, like, Marvel doesn't do social commentary. It's mixed with a ton of fun, right? They kind of do social commentary, and then they do just pure fun, right? And I feel like people are kind of expecting that from this movie, even though this movie is not meant to do that. It would be nice if this thing worked. If I could scroll. But, like, yeah, that's the thing, right? And I want to kind of give my own thoughts now while I'm, because this thing doesn't apparently want to scroll for me, so I can't really do anything. Trying to see if I can just maybe if I zoom out or do this, I don't know. Uh, anyways, yeah, this is the thing, right? And I mean, my own opinion about the movie is, in a sense, I I thought it was really good, and I thought the social commentary on kind of like getting like you know wanting things and stuff was excellent and well placed, and I mean. Honestly, the overall the movie was I felt was very well done, and 
I think it's one of the better DC movies, and I think it is better than the first one, even though there are some plot holes. You know, we got the Invisible Jet, we got Linda Carter at the end, uh, which I don't personally read too much into. I think it's just fun cameo. Maybe she'll appear again if there's a third one, which we don't know because uh, Patty Jenkins has said if it's not going to be released in theaters, she doesn't want to direct a third one. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think that at the end of the day, I enjoyed this movie and I thought it was a really fun kind of thing. But I also obviously know that there are people who didn't like it, and so, you know, that's their prerogative. But, I, you know, it, to me, it really felt like Spider-Man 2. That's, like, I think the big thing, right? And I think like, Spider-Man 2 is a good movie, right? Because it kind of gives us the idea of loss and losing it, either your powers and this responsibility that comes with it and having to give up things that you wouldn't want to give up for the sake of everybody else because that's your job as a superhero. And I think Wonder Woman 2 kind of, or Wonder Woman 1984 kind of emphasizes that as well, right? And so that's kind of my perspective on things. I, yes, is it... Like, am I angry that I only got two minutes of Cheetah at, for, like, ten seconds at the end? Yes. And I'm mad that, you know, I mean, that's about it. And are there some other plot holes in terms of the fact that it's in the past and what would happen in the future? Yes. Uh, but at the same time, I, I don't believe that, like, I believe that there was a lot of logic and good in here. And that it outweighs the bad. And I think the first movie overall had better continuity and stuff. But I think this movie had a better story and a better kind of plot. And I think, again, very much like Spider-Man 2 is what I think of this as. But yeah, let me know what you think down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share your thoughts. And of course, see you next time. Bye.